Next, we're going to have a look at VO2 max. And VO2 max, it's the maximum capacity of your body to transport and utilize oxygen in one minute during maximal exercise. And in these studies here, the athlete's response to increased carbon dioxide was 47% of that recorded by the non-athlete group, the non-athlete controls. In other words, the athlete was able to tolerate a far higher concentration of carbon dioxide, that it had less of a response to their breathing than the non-athlete controls. And athletic ability to perform during lower oxygen pressure and higher carbon dioxide pressure corresponded to maximal oxygen uptake or VO2 max. So it's advantageous in terms of VO2 max to have a high tolerance to CO2 and to be able as well to tolerate a drop in oxygen saturation. So in this paper here, CO2 responsiveness was found to correlate negatively with maximum oxygen uptake in four out of the five trained subjects. And basically what that means is that the athletes who had a good tolerance to carbon dioxide had high VO2 max. Conversely, if an athlete had a strong ventilatory response to carbon dioxide, they had a reduced VO2 max because, of course, their strong response to the buildup of carbon dioxide would have increased their breathing volume and this negatively affected VO2 max. Another indicator of physical performance alongside VO2 max is running economy. And running economy is the amount of energy or oxygen consumed while running at a speed that is less than maximum pace. Typically, the less energy required to run at a given pace, the better. If your body is able to use oxygen efficiently, it's indicative of a high running economy. So here I looked at the effect of breath holding and running economy. Now the breath holding was on swimmers, and I know it, it sounds kind of a little bit strange, we're looking at running economy in swimming. And in this study here, 18 swimmers comprising of 10 men and 8 women were assigned to two groups. The first group was required to take only two breaths per length and the second group seven breaths. The first group who were required to take only two breaths per length were under breathing. They were hypoventilating. And the second group were breathing as what would be considered normal. And interestingly, the researchers found that the running economy improved by 6% in the group that performed reduced breathing during swimming. So there's advantages that when we expose the body to reduced breathing volume, and that in turn then is exposing the body to lower oxygen saturation, as well as higher carbon dioxide, that it can translate into benefits in both VO2 max and also in running economy.